Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. There's another paid request, this time for Ronald. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, randomness, out of blueness, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for It's a Wonderful Life from 1946. A film that has been very much praised by critics. Well, I take that back because back in the day that wasn't really the case. Because for those who don't know, I mean, this is a film that you know Frank Capra directed, stars James Stewart, Jimmy Stewart. Considered by a lot of people as a classic, but back then for the company RKO, this was a flop. This was initially a big flop. And I didn't, what I said about critics, I take that bad. There were quite a few critics that did not like the film when it came out. Even nowadays, there are people who like it, but there's a lot of people that go, yeah, it's overrated. And okay, is it in my top 100 films of all time? No, but I have a different taste in movies my taste in movies is more action horror films it's just a of personal taste and it depends with other people's personal taste but i think it's a good film i don't think it's a bad film at all i think it's for its time well acted what for its time meaning the way people acted back then where it was much more in a way in a weird way much more sincerity a lot less cynical with characters a lot more you know, trying to be endearing. and But there's a lot of people nowadays that look at the message of the film. And I can get where they're coming from. Which I'll get to in a minute. I, I can get where they're coming from. I mean, this film I had never seen all the way through. Until now. I'd seen references. I had seen clips. Uh, mainly in Gremlins. <laughs> like, I saw Gremlins a lot when I was a kid. And the scene... Where I think it's the mom watching TV and it's the ending of It's a Wonderful Life when Jim, Jimmy Stewart, hello there. Yeah. Merry Christmas, movie house. Merry Christmas, building alone. And yet you know, I had always seen that in Gremlins. Same with, I forget if it was a Jim Carrey film, which movie it is where. The scene with Jimmy Stewart. What, you want the moon? I'll lasso the moon for you. I forget if it was a Jim Carrey movie or... There's some other movie where that was referenced. That uh, I remember so much I'm forgetting. But yeah, I thought this film for its time... It is a bit long. It's a little over two hours. I don't know if it needed to be that long. But... It tells the story of George, played by Jimmy Stewart, which, god damn, he gets a lot of bad luck. And I will be honest, one of my critiques of the film is, I fucking hate the town he's in. Not in the fact that I wanted to change to Pottersville, which is more of the sleazy style. No, I mean, like, the townsfolk. Not because of the... It wasn't badly acted or anything of the sort. It was... Well, I'll get to that. I like the way Frank Capper directed it. I like the shots he had where it's showcasing the town praying for this character, George. Oh, okay, that's nice. And they talk about how, you know, he's done so many good things for the town. And, you know, hopefully, you know, God, if you could give him, you know, give him a break. Nice shots of Bedford Falls and the, you know, the snow coming down. Interesting way of showcasing God, where it's a faraway shot of stars and they're just kind of blinking, and then this angel, another star blinking is like a conversation. Uh, I don't know why something about that. I'm like, okay, that's a different way of doing it. Because uh, it seemed like back to the day, if they showed that, it'd be you know, people in white gown, maybe like a little halo, like a wire, you like a halo there. Maybe I'm thinking, you know, sometimes in Three Stooges. Like some of the Shemp Three Stooges, they had that. But no, the, again, different way of, of telling it. And pretty much they get this angel, Cla well, this guy who's trying to get his wings to be an angel, Clarence. We're going to 
tell George's life so that you know what you're up against because he's as wit's end, so to speak, and ready to pretty much take the jump off the pier at this case off the bridge. And when you showcase his life, the stuff that happens in his life is as a kid, he saves his little brother from ice. But by doing that, he lost hearing in one ear. This one guy helps him. This one guy, his son died, but he he's out of it. And he's actually putting poison capsules into what's needed. And as a kid, he stops him. And the motherfucker starts slapping him. And the kid's like, well, what are you doing? Look, look what are you doing? See? See? And he, I mean, the kid is a saint. As the character is a saint. Because he goes, listen, I did it, you know, what happened to your son is real bad, but look what you're doing. And Greta the guy, like, apologizes. And hugs him. But there's a part of him that's like, you're still a piece of shit, fuck you. You're still slapping a fucking, like, ten-year-old kid in the face. That's how they did in the 1940s. But it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, fuck you and the horse you rode, on, rode in on, man. Yeah, I did. You're distraught over your son's death, but let the kid explain when you literally have a fucking bag of poison, which, why is it there in the first place? I don't know. Why was the big thing of poison? I don't know. But, and you know, growing up, he wants to see the world and build stuff. He falls in love with this girl. You want the moon? I'll throw a lasso on him, pull it down. And Jimmy Stewart, I thought, did a good job. Some people complain about his performance being too big or broad. I actually liked it. You know, Jimmy Stewart's a great actor. One of the great older actors. Yeah, he had a little cadence in his accent, his voice. But I thought it worked for him. And I, I loved him in Real Window. That's my favorite film. I would say that's probably my favorite Alfred Hitchcock film. Along with The Birds. But I really like... That's my favorite role, is in uh, Rear Window. I really liked that movie. But, uh... I was going to say. Yeah, I, I like Jimmy Stewart. I like his acting. I think he did a good job here. Uh, I thought he played off the, the girl well. Like, they go on a date. And she has, like, a robe on. Due to an accident, her robe gets taken off and she's hiding in the bushes. I like that he takes it. Oh, wow, wait a minute. This is an interesting situation. Oh, give me back my robe. I don't know. I mean, yeah, and I've never been in a situation like this before. I like that it was playful. And I guess I was rather surprised because in the 1940s, for some reason, I think that'd be too risque. I mean, this was a time period that they wouldn't even allow you to show a toilet. Because that was one of the things with Psycho in 1960s. Like, oh my god, they showed a toilet. <gasps> like, so what? It's not like there's shit in it. But I mean, it was a different, like, a lot of different principles back in the day. But yeah, like, he, his dad has a stroke, and then his dad dies, and... He's guilt tripped into staying to help his dad's business by the uncle. And then the brother, Harry, who Jimmy saved, tossed him his ear. Harry's like, hey, you know what? I know you gave me money, George, for college, and you're staying behind, even though you see the world. You know what? I'm going to come back and I'm going to let you see the world, and I'll take care of the business. Instead, he comes back, he gets married. Now, granted, he does at least say, listen, man, I know what I said, but I'm still going to do it. But then it's George overhearing, oh, well, he's going to get a good deal over here. And George doesn't want to fuck up his brother's life. So technically, his brother didn't really fuck him over, but at the same time, it's like he got married and like you knew... Like, come on, you knew. So he didn't, but in a way he did. But he wasn't doing it like 
mean, nasty way either. And then the wedding happens and the entire fucking town comes to the bank he's working at on the same day. And that's the thing when you have a small town and everyone comes to the same day and they all want the money. Then it's like, well, fuck. I can't go on my honeymoon. The bad guy Potter is trying to shut this place down. He literally has to use money from his own honeymoon to get to these assholes who can't fucking wait a day or two or three. And even Jimmy Stewart's trying to, well, you know, it's like, I mean, this town is assholes. I'm sorry. And then, like, him just doing the best. He establishes this Bailey Park, this modern housing development. And then later on, like, he has kids. And he never got to see the world. And this town, like, fucking dragged him down. And then the stupid fuckhead uncle lost $8,000 because he was too much being a... Hey, Mr. Potter, look, this guy Harry is a war hero. So that's another thing where George, like, okay... George could not be in the war because of his l lack of hearing in one ear. So then his brother becomes a war hero and is going to meet the president and come home for Christmas. And then the uncle is telling the potter, Los $8,000. So now Potter's like, oh yeah, you're going to be embezzled and you're going to jail, motherfucker. And then George understandably loses it. It's like he loses it against his family, and I'm like, I don't blame him. Granted, the kids didn't do anything, to be fair, and he he doesn't treat the kids that badly. He like says one or two things, but nothing that horrible. It just, well, come on, play the piano. Does he just out of his element? I don't blame him. I'm waiting for him to get a machine gun and go... <laughs> but he's ready to commit suicide. And this is where it lost me a little bit. He wants to commit suicide because... Well, you should never do that. Easier said than done. But I would say this. I think everybody in their life has had that thought. As lame and... After school special as it sounds. You ne you If you do it. You never know what happens tomorrow. If you do it. You will never know what happens tomorrow. And that. Your best day. Could be two days from now. And if you do it. You would never know that. And always think about that. Your best day. In your life could be two days from now. I know that sounds stupid, but but what I was meant, what I was trying to say is he wants to do it because he feels he's not good enough. It lost me a little bit with that because I'm like, really, dude, you think you're not good enough? And so the angels telling him, well, this is what would happen if you weren't born. It should be the other way around. You should be. I want to do this because. This town isn't good enough. No, it's not that you're not good enough for this town, George. This town is not good enough for you. That's the problem. That's the issue. And the angel should be showing this in fucking town. This is how good George is. This is what he gave up for you sons of bitches. That granted, at the end, this is why I could handle it. The town... They heard George was in trouble. They all got together and p put the money in and had this big party. As someone, uh, as I said later on, I want to get the line right. No man is a failure who has friends. But my dude, you should never have thought you were a failure in the fucking first place. And that's why, like, granted, that was nice they did at the end, to be fair. But I got so pissed at this town. I'm like, 
It's your fault. You motherfuckers came in the same day to bank and he didn't have a fucking honeymoon. The stupid fuckhead uncle who should be the one worried to go to jail and in my opinion should go to jail for stupidity. He's too fucking stupid to be out in the world. The uncle should go to jail for stupidity. But I mean, the, the, the good last third of the film is Clarence showing him what happens if you weren't born. That's just, I, I'm, I will admit when I first, as I was watching this, I was surprised that was a longer, I guess for some reason I thought that was most of the movie was him in this other life that didn't happen. I, I guess I was I was surprised it was more the build up and then there was like the last thirty minutes or so. I don't know why I assumed it was flip. I guess I thought it'd be like twenty minutes of his life, then the rest of it would be if you weren't born. I don't know why I thought that. And I, I do wonder why didn't the angel or Clarence why didn't Clarence go uh dude your money? Potter has it. He would know. I mean, that would still help him not commit suicide to know where the fuck the money was. That, that Potter guy, he got the $8,000. He stole your fucking money. I mean, he, why didn't you tell him that? He never told George, Jimmy Stewart, never told him where that $8,000 was. And even at the end of the film, now I think about it, they could still send George to jail where the guy would go, I don't give a fuck you got the money. I'm still, you know, you still going to jail. You still going to jail, buddy. But I mean, throughout the showing where his life would be, you know, if you didn't... If you weren't born, your brother would have died and he would not have saved the people during the war and this transport. I get the idea. You know, I, I, a guy put it best. Everyday people struggle and there's others that do horrible things. We have a choice. Either they give up or they keep fighting and find the beauty in life. And despite your struggles, despite your up and downs, and a lot of times could be down, in a weird way you could look back and say, actually it was a wonderful life. That despite the struggles George went through, he still has a loving wife, still has very nice, you know, loving kids, like they treat him well. Then I treat them like assholes. And he has a town that loves him. Enough to give all this money and more. In his time of need. And a town that actually cared that he did these good deeds. And perhaps those good deeds can come back and boomerang back to you. One day. Again, as Clarence once said. Uh... uh you may think of yourself as a failure, but um, I didn't they did it right. No man's a failure who has friends. And I, I that point I thought overcame some of the other cynical stuff. Like you know, there's people reviewers nowadays they go, Oh man, you know what, in reality uh if the bad guy had taken over the town and turned to Pottersville with all this business, it actually would have helped the town. And I'm like, you know, with the profit and retail. And I'm going, yeah, but it'd still be turned to a shithole. And that's the, the point. You may get more profit, but it'd still be a shithole. 
I mean, that was kind of the point of it. This is kind of a guy that's pretty cynical. And, well, again, the whole point of, well, this guy was a, you know, George himself thinking, you know, I'm a failure, I'm a failure to my family. I'm like, no, 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 this is, stop. No, it should be the town kissing your ass. And again, in a way, and again, there is that thing of, you know, the the brother comes in and to my big brother George, the richest man in town. It's like, there's a part of you that goes, so are you saying that even though you went through a lot of shit, suck it up, buttercup? <laughs> that still doesn't denounce some of the bad shit that happened. And But again, it's one of those that, still at the end of the day, you have a town that loves them. You have a, a wife and kids. And... My, just give him a fucking vacation, man. Let him have a vacation to see the world in a week. God damn, give this guy a fucking vacation. <laughs> Let him have a week with, you know, the two of them go around the world in a days. Or go around the world in 80 days. I mean, just... Just give him a funny vacation. Let him see the world for a week. Mr. War Hero. Don't give me a toast. Don't give me a fucking speech. Give me enough money and go around the world. You take over the business for a fucking year. So I can go see the world. You want to do that, George? Maybe get the president to help me out. Yes. But anyway... Again, there's a... I did get where some people were coming from, but at the end of the day, I did feel it was rather sincere what it was trying to say. And I did it. The point it was making, I, I get it, and I can understand it. And whilst I still have a bone to pick with the town, fucking them over for so many years... Whether they realize it or not, I think that's the thing, is that they were not being mean or facetious. They are just being fucking uh, oblivious. <laughs> and then afterward, like, what happened afterward? Is, is he still going to go to jail? Oh, he's got the money, but Potter would be like, I don't give a fuck about your money. Shove the money up your ass. You're still going to jail. Because I'm going to press charges on you. Wait, this 8000 You gave me a bribe. Peter makes his shit up. You gave me this bribe. What's his 8000 Did I pull this out of my ass? Oh, is that little bank thing I have here? Oh, yeah. Why'd you give me this? Did you give me a bribe? He could make anything up. He's a... And the, by the way, the bad guy gets away with the $8,000. <laughs> but the bad guy gets away with the $8,000 and he never gets a comeuppance. That's another thing that made me mad. The bad guy didn't get a comeuppance. The bad guy, did, you know, he got to keep the $8,000. <laughs> At least have something where, like, I don't know. He goes out on the ice, he falls and, I don't know, breaks his hip, breaks his ass, breaks his nose, breaks his dick, something. Or, I don't know, he gets a comeuppance and he goes to jail. You, oh, there's 8,000, you must have stolen this 8,000. No, I didn't. I don't like Clarence makes a phone call. Hey, uh, I think... Maybe this guy, uh, I think this one guy, Potter, I think he stole $8,000. Yeah, he's got it there. I think it has even a little, like, bank thing on it. I think he stole it from them. You know, call a cop. And, uh, you know, they arrest the guy for stealing 8000 Because he, he did. Because he kept it. He didn't give it back. So that's stealing. I, at least, like, the bad guy did come up and... So there's a few things that, that bud me about it. But overall, I do think Frank Capra had a sincerity of what he was trying to accomplish. I thought the acting, especially Jimmy Stewart, did a good job. Uh, some people were annoyed by Clarence. I wasn't annoyed by him. And again, it was nice to see all the familiar pieces. I remember the... 
that every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. It just again with the ending, with the people singing and the town helping George out and oh, Lane's on. It was a sweet ending. Some people may say manipulative, but I thought it was a sweet enough ending that it's a movie I had to see people watching during the Christmas season. And you you get to that last five minutes and it just uh you know puts a bit of a smile on your face. So uh, I don't think it's a bad film. I don't. I don't think it's a bad film. Uh, I liked it. Do I consider one of my favorite films? No. But I liked what I saw. But remember, I'm the guy that hates everything. Even though I liked this one. I liked 2001 Space Odyssey. I liked Shawshank Redemption. I liked Pulp Fiction. Um, but hey, if I don't like, I don't know, The Dark Knight Rises or Prometheus or the new Marvel films, I hate everything. Do you like anything? Yeah, in my opinion, something that's good. And I think It's a Wonderful Life was a good movie. So, with that said, maybe some people say too sentimental, but... Eh, that's... A lot of movies in that time period were that way. I don't know, maybe we're missing a bit of that in today's age. More of a hopeful time, in a weird way. Because you got into the 50s... And the 50s seemed like a, in a weird way, a more hopeful time before, you know, the 70s. But, uh, yeah. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.